Hello everyone, your Sim CFI is here to teach you how to lean the engine using the mixture control that's this red knob right here. Now before we get into all this, we're going to be trying to steer at the gauges and lean the engine, so let's have the autopilot fly the airplane for a bit. This is the Aztec 30 autopilot, just in a real brief demonstration of how to use it. Autopilot master, it's going to go through a system self-test to make sure you keep hand flying the airplane. Okay, it's got a green ready light. We're going to press this button once, twice for heading mode. And now the airplane will steer wherever your, your heading bug is set. Now we want altitude hold as well, so we'll click this black button right here. And when you have your yoke out, it's going to be this, this one right here. Alright, so now we can start talking about leaning the engine. So leaning the engine is changing the fuel to air ratio going into into the engine itself. With, with the carbureted airplane, it's, it's from the carburetor to the engine, and from the fuel injected airplane, it's, it's usually from the fuel injectors to the engine, to the cylinder. And so right now, running at 5,000 feet at full ridge, we're putting too much gas per air by weight into the engine. And so number one, that's wasting fuel, wasting money. And number two, that's just making the engine run dirtier. It's gonna, it could follow up the spark plugs, and uh, it, it, it just makes the engine run dirtier when you're wasting gas. So, I'll pause this real quick. And I want to show you this Lycoming power chart. And so there's a few there's a few ways of leaning the engine. Let's go back into the sim real quick. Hit the A button three times. And we'll come down here and look at this. And so we can do two out of the three ways in the Cherokee. Number one is you can just pull the mixture back until you hear the engine run rough. I just done. We can pull the engine, pull the mixture back to hear the engine run rough, like that. Push it back in a little bit so it runs smooth, and then there you go, it's leaned. So that's the easiest way to do it. The second way is to lean to peak EGT, and we'll demonstrate this a bit more. But the EGT is already going up; that's exhaust gas temperature. And the third way is if you have a fuel flow gauge, which we don't have in this airplane. There is in the Comanche and there is in all of your fuel injected airplanes. So now talking about exhaust gas temperature, this Lycoming power chart will show you what happens at different e exhaust gas temperatures or EGTs. This top line here is your EGT. These numbers over here are your differential f from EGT, your EGT temp change in degrees. And so Usually, when we did that first setting, where we lean to, when we, when you pull the mixture back to the engine run rough and you push it back in, you're going to end up with your peak EGT, which is right here, and that's going to get you towards your best economy range. If you look down here, your specific fuel consumption goes down, and this is what comes to a valley right at that peak EGT. That's why it's the best economy, and then. Leaning, uh, there, there's usually another, there's a, usually a couple of settings. If you have best economy, you can also have max power cruise. And the Comanche has, has numbers for that. And so with all these power settings, you got one and two up here to tell you two different fuel flows to go to if you're using the fuel flow to lean. And so the number one line is going to be best economy, which is peak EGT. The number two line is going to be best power cruise, which is 100 degrees rich of peak EGT. And so what that means is from peak on the rich side, if you keep leaning past peak, you're going to be on the lean of peak side. So rich of peak is going to be this way. Each one of these lines, these horizontal lines, is 100 degrees temperature difference for EGT, you can see. So 100 degrees rich of peak is right around here. And you can correlate that with your cylinder head temperature right here, and your percent power, and your specific fuel consumption. And you can see in this best power range, your CHTs aren't doing too bad. But if you do what some sometimes like, like homing, or you'll see it recommended in manuals to do 50 degrees rich of peak, and that brings you right around here. And that brings you CHTs right near the maximum, and that's just a little bit too hot. 
doing peak EGT isn't too bad for your CHTs either. So you can see peak EGT and 100, 100 degree, 150 degrees rich of peak, your, your engine's doing a little bit better temperature wise. So those are your two settings you can usually use for that. But with the with the Cherokee and the and anything that doesn't have a fuel flow for, for that matter, you're just going to be pulling back either to until it runs off and push it in that gives you peak, or you can just use the EGT to just find those. And so right now we're just about near peak, and when you find peak, you can move this line here, this little bar where you can mark where peak is. And so we saw the temperature, we saw the RPM go down. And that's about where our peak is going to be. So we'll bring the mixture back in a little bit. Now this trim system, those lights will flash telling you if you're out of trim. And if it's flashing with nose up, it means it wants nose up trim. And if it flashes with trim down, it wants nose down trim. So back to this. So if we wanted to do 100 degrees rich of peak, we're at peak right now, and we'll start pushing the mixture back in. So we're going back down that line to the right on the chart. There's 25 degrees rich. This would be 50. You see 25 degrees per division, so each line is 25 degree difference. So there's 50. Remember, 50 is where it's going to be a little extra hot. And so now we're pushing it more. There's uh, 75, and we keep pushing it. My mixture is almost back to full rich again. And so that's where you want to keep in mind, at least at 5,000 feet, you're, you're either going to be at peak, or you're going to be close to full rich. And so we'll look down. This is where it is. That's pushing it all the way up. So it's not much difference if you want to get it to 100 degrees rich. You just don't want to sit near 50 degrees rich of peak. So now we're bringing it back to our peak. Engine run drive, push it back in. And that'll be right about peak EGT. And you see there's a little bit of a delay, so when, you, when you're when you leaning to the EGT itself, watching the needle, you got to move the mixture lever a little bit slower. So let's pause this. Let's go into the Cherokee manual. And so we don't want to lean above 75% power, and that's why they don't even include it for the cruise chart. You pick a percent power setting you want to be at, and then that'll tell you what RPM to be at for what altitude you're at, your pressure level, your pressure altitude here. So you just choose what you want essentially. That tells you what percent power. And then you can also look at this chart over here. And we were doing 70% power at 2540. So 70% power should give us about 9.3 gallons per hour. And so they list this here for planning purposes, especially since we don't have a fuel flow indicator. So if we're back in the sim, we're leaned out, you can press shift two and it'll tell you. So we got 9.9, .9, it said 9.3. So let's pull it back a little. And there you go, see the EGT is getting right back to its peak. And that's where the engine starts going just a bit south, and that's 9.3. So this is a, an extra cool tool that you have. So now we covered leaning by ear in the tachometer. We, we covered leaning by EGT. We talked about peak EGT, and we talked about how to get down to 100 degrees rich, and we talked about why you don't want to be at 50 degrees rich because of this line here. 50 degrees rich of peak is putting the cylinder head temperature right near its maximum. And I'll link this in the description below so you can look at this chart. Then we covered a little bit on how to look at the Cherokee chart to look for percent power and how much fuel you're going to burn and how to pick that power setting. Let's go ahead and hop into the Comanche real quick and we'll talk about the fuel flow gauge. So now we're back into the A2A Comanche. We got the same Aztec 30 autopilot set up for altitude and heading mode, around 5,000 feet. Let's pick a power setting real quick. Now picking a power setting in the Comanche, especially with the Comanche, A2A's got a new feature where you can kind of see vibration. And so you can, because in the real world you can feel it, and you might pick a power setting based on vibration as well.
but you're also going to pick it based on how fast you want to go and how much fuel you want to burn. So looking at this power setting table for the Comanche manual this time, we talked about how this top line was for best economy cruise, peak EGT, and how the second line was for best power cruise, 100 degrees bridge of peak. And so let's, we're, we're at 5,000 feet. Let's say we wanted the cruise at 75% power, so 5,000 feet is the sixth line down. Let's say we wanted to do 2,200 RPM. We got one, two, three, four, five. There's no entry, so with 2,200 RPM, you simply won't get 75% power at 5,000 feet. So, and we usually, I usually like to do a lower RPM as well. So let's look at doing 2,100 at 65% power. So with those two already set, 5,000 feet, that brings us up to essentially 23 inches of manifold pressure. So we're going to go ahead and set that up now. 23 inches, 2,100 RPM. So there's 22, there's 23. And this is already an argument against the necessity of 100% making sure your RPM is a larger number than manifold pressure. It just doesn't make any sense. So there's 2100 RPM with 23 inches of manifold pressure. And real quick about that vibration, you can bring up this GPS over here. see the vibration. Now if we bring the RPM back to a lower value, you can start seeing it smooth out. Now we're closer to 1800 and you can see the vibrations have almost stopped. You can read it a lot clearer than when we were at 21. See it's vibrating a lot again. And so that's a cool feature. We'll just set it at this power setting for now for the sake of demonstrating leaning. I'll let you guys experiment on what power settings you think are best. So, if we want to do best economy cruise, save some gas, peak EGT, that's going to be 12.3 gallons per hour. So we look at the fuel flow gauge, which is this one right here. And you could just pull it back to 12.3, which is right about there. And this will bring you to peak EGT. And now, another thing, when, when you're down at peak EGT, if you keep pulling it past lean, most engines won't run very well lean of peak. And so you see, we'll go south a bit more, and it's going to start running rough. There it is. And before it started running rough, I could hear the engine developing less power. It can be a little more difficult. It can be a little more difficult to detect a power change when you have a constant speed prep because the governor is trying to hold it. But if you listen carefully, you can you can hear the power loss. So 12.3 was where that was. And then you also notice on this fuel flow gauge is that it has a percent power band here, percent power band. And so we said we were going to choose 65% power, and that's about where we lined up. See, this gauge can be very easy to set your your power settings in your, in your fuel flow. So if you know you're at 65% power, just throw your mixture anywhere in between this range, and it'll be decent enough. But with that said, with any mixture setting and power setting you choose, you always want to look at your engine instruments, making sure the ETT lines up, make sure your cylinder head temperatures don't get too hot. This is about as hot as I usually like to get them. The, uh, the top of the green arc here is 425 and the red line is 500. And you usually like to keep your cylinder head temperatures below 400 Fahrenheit. And then make sure your oil temp's good. If you got to cool off the engine, just push the mixture in more. So now, 
if we want to run best power cruise, 100 degrees wrench, we're going to go to approx uh, we're going approximately 14 gallons per hour. So let's note the CH at uh, the EGT right around 14. We'll see how much it really changes. So 12.3 to 14 gallons per hour, we're enriching it again. And you can see all these vibrations. So you want to find a different power setting. You'll see that EGT is coming down. But it doesn't come down very far. And so that shows you that the fuel flow can be somewhat inaccurate. And I would rely more on the EGT. And so that you really have to, that's where you just have to kind of figure out which gauge you want to trust more. But you could, we could lean and find peak EGT. It's probably going to be around the point where it ran rough, just like in the Cherokee. So there's the power loss, now it's running rough. I'll enrich it just a little bit. And that's right around our 1400. And you can even tell the power loss because now the the autopilot needs nose up trim, which means we're slowing down. So now we'll push the mixture in. And to get that that hundred degree difference, it's gotta come all the way down to here. So we'll push this mixture in a little bit more to see if we can get it to move that far. it forwards looks like. Remember at 5,000 feet and we almost had to go forwards on the Cherokee to get a hundred degree difference. And there, so this is just over a hundred. So it's just like the Cherokee. So it's just shy of full rich to get a hundred degree difference off peak. And so we had peak around 12, 11, and then a hundred degrees difference was around 16. So the fuel flows are kind of more generalized. You can go off EGT more, but you can really choose any one to lean. You just want to check your gauges, make sure your CHTs aren't running too high. That's really the ultimate factor, is just making is leaning to save fuel and making sure the temperatures aren't out of whack. And so that's a good tutorial on how to lean with listening and watching the tag or leaning by EGT or using a fuel flow gauge to help you out. Alright, we'll see you into the next video.